essentially, uh, uh, I wanted to just chat with you about your life work, uh, studying cults, studying fringe conspiracy groups, and and get your thoughts on uh, Donald Trump and what is happening in the United States. Okay, sure. So, I mean, I've written blogs myself. I've, you know, it seems, and, I, and I'm familiar with your wonderful article on Hubbard as a narcissist, and I saw your presentation of, of Moon and, and giving examples from the DSM-5 criteria yeah. Of speeches of Moon, which I'd love to get a hold of, of that. But I, I just, I'm going to keep it open to what, what are your thoughts and what do you want, what do you think it's important for people to understand? Um, the mental health communities, uh, especially uh, psychologists and psychiatrists, were in a bind with Trump. They were in a bind because of the Goldwater Rule which, uh, for good reasons, had established a policy which said that uh, meta, uh, mental, those mental health professionals, at least in those professions, could not comment on the mental health of, of someone whom they had not interviewed. And even if they had interviewed, they would need the person's permission. Right. And I have Bandy Leak, uh, who edited yes. The Dangerous Case of Donald Trump, coming to speak at my forensic think tank on the 23rd of January. And, there, you know, the reason for the gold water, water rule, uh, it was quite sound. The, uh, uh, the discussion uh, that led to it was, uh, was an article during Goldwater's uh, candidacy. Right. Which abused... A, fairly shaky psychiatric uh, responses to begin with. And uh, essentially uh, libeled Goldwater. Uh, he, he did sue, he won, I think, a dollar for the, for the settlement. But mm -hmm. in fact, he had been libeled. And in reaction to that, that reaction, uh, or in, in, into that, that uh, article, uh, the psychiatric community, first in, in the U.S., established uh, the Goldwater rule. And at some point, the American Psychological Association adopted, I'm, I believe I checked, the Canadians follow the same thing. I'm not sure about the Brits, but. Right, but we, that's, that, that we, we know all of that, and yeah, um, okay. you but your history. Yeah, but the, the crisis, of course, with, with Trump is that uh, people felt his dangers were so egregious that they had to speak up. And part of the, the justification is that people can speak up and get information about Trump without having to uh, interview him. Uh, it's a general issue with psychohistory that public figures leave decades of, of evidence behind them. And so one can make uh, assessments may not, well, I'm not sure what the right word, I don't want to say diagnoses. Right, but, well, you're not a mental health professional, you're a right. sociologist. Right. That's right. If people can make uh, uh, evaluations about about people's mental health conditions based not upon interview material, right. that ability is uh, the premise of, of psychohistory. Right. Psycho right. And so uh, one can make make uh, judgments about about what's behind Trump's behavior and still not violate uh, ethical uh, psychiatric mental health rules. Right. And for people who had studied uh, uh, cult leaders like uh, like Aaron Hubbard and then and then uh, Sun Young Moon, uh, and, and I can speak specifically about people who had studied uh, Hubbard, as Trump became more prominent, he, some of the people were saying, "Oh, we've seen that before." That uh, for individuals like myself who believe that that Hubbard probably I'd say most certainly was a, a, a narcissist and indeed was a malignant narcissist. The behavioral patterns that we were witnessing with Trump had dramatic parallels to what they, they saw with Hubbard. Yep. And now with, uh, with Trump's uh, behavior in office, the examples just multiply. Right. Uh, and 
for individuals who have seen the destruction uh, that come from having an organization run by a, a narcissist, uh, Scientology. Uh, they were afraid ahead of time before Trump got office and all their fears, uh, I think, have been surpassed. You know, what's going on in, in the Trump administration is uh, frightening and it's not over yet. Right. Uh, and I just, I, 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 just looking at some of the diagnostic features in, in, in the DSM, uh, uh, the uh, uh, narcissists overestimate their abilities and inflate their accomplishments. Well, in numerous, uh, uh, countless uh, evidence about Trump, reflecting back upon his, his business achievements, his um, uh, educational, his uh, intelligence, um, right. You know, and his achievements uh, as the president already, when he talks about, uh, well, when he went before the UN and said something to the effect that uh, he's probably done more in the time he's been as American president than any other American president that, that period of time. Uh, I think people laughed at him at that moment. Yes, and there's uh, it also uh, in the DSM it says, they may blithely assume that others attribute the same value to their efforts and may be surprised when the praise they expect and feel they deserve is not forthcoming. Trump was surprised at the laughter. Yeah. And then he tried to turn it around and say, well, he was trying to be funny, but uh, he, was, he was caught off guard by that. Right. Uh, fantasies of unlimited success, uh, his reflections back upon his, his uh, business achievements. Right. He never mentions all the bankruptcies. Right. Um, and just, just uh, for example, uh, and then uh, mentions about the, uh, uh, compare themselves favorably with famous or privileged people. And this has been a major uh, point of contention in American uh, foreign politics. Not only the assumption with, or the, well, whatever this relationship is with Putin. Uh, and we don't really know fully what that relationship is, but it's, it's something's way off there. Uh, but it's comment, comments recently about uh, about uh, Xi Jinping in China, uh, I guess a, a few days ago, saying that uh, she was more honorable than Nancy Pelosi. Um, and then what's his name in Philippi, uh, Duarte, Duarte in the Philippines, is favorable right. comment to him. Right. I mean, he's associating with famous or privileged people, but they, they're all autocrats. Right. It was interesting when he... Um, was having a, a meeting with Justin Trudeau, Canada. Trudeau's kind of a young, youngish guy, pretty good looking. And you're and, a Canadian, I might add, for those yes, who are watching. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, University I'm arguably a dual citizen, but, uh, but yeah, I identify myself as Canadian now. Um, yeah. There was an odd set of comments that Tr Trudeau made about, or, or that uh, Trump made about Trudeau about being good looking. And then he had to come back with saying, oh, I'm, I'm pretty good looking too. Most people would have missed it. But if you go back and if you can find those exchanges afterwards, it's quite revealing uh, that he's so concerned with standing next to a guy who arguably is pretty good looking and then having to elevate his own, his own, own appearance uh, over and against him. Yeah. So it was a, a revealing moment. Um, the need for excessive admiration. Steve, I've always been struck about Trump at his rallies. When he often walks on, on stage, of course the audience is clapping, he starts clapping too. The only reason I can think he starts clapping is that to keep the applause going, to raise it, to get more accolades from the audience. Mm. It's this uh, this uh, need for excessive admiration. Uh, his constant comments about how well he is doing, starting with the, the number of people who showed up at, at the American inauguration, you know, right. this insistence that, that he, his numbers far outstrip Barack Obama's. Now, what's interesting though, and this is probably going to be a, a challenge for you, is not only what the narcissist does, assuming that Trump is, but not only what the narcissist does, but also the narcissistic supply, the, the feeding of people around him. So Sean Spicer then 
started saying, uh, you know, was was an obvious lie. Yeah. Right. yeah. Now, and then, uh, uh, everybody was struck uh, about that cabinet meeting uh, a number of months ago, where uh, people went around the room and one by one praised and uh, talked about the honor and privilege it was to work with Trump and the Trump administration. Yeah, exactly. I saw that one too. Yeah, and that was the time when all the comments started coming out about the cult of Trump. Yeah. You know, this was a, an, an adulation of, of the leader. And of course, uh, as cult leaders do, he cannot accept criticism. Right. You know, and the, the, the worst example of not uh, accepting criticism, that's in addition to what's going on with the wall debates now. Right. About slamming his fist down and walking out of the room because uh, powerful people don't accept his his view. Uh, but the worst example probably was when he got into the spitting match uh, with the former what, Miss Universe contestant. So uh, I guess he had said that she was heavy or fat or something. Uh, she brought her up to the media and then for days – Maybe longer, Trump kept coming back on it and harping on it and harping on it and har- harping on it. Uh, he cannot take criticism. And so what struck me, and I think some other people, is that not only was Trump probably demonstrating characters of narcissism, but it went further. Mm-hmm. This need for revenge against critics is, as far as I understand, a characteristic of malignant narcissism. Mm-hmm. Lignant narcissists, and you would know this far better than me, are individuals who react with violence mm-hmm. against critics. And uh, Trump, and time and time again, has reacted uh, very harshly uh, uh, to people who he believes criticize, and he just can't let it go. I mean, right. no one will be criticized, but Trump can't can't move on with it or make a joke out of it. Uh, and so, as far as I know, he's verbally abusive, but he hasn't, you know, beaten up anybody or ordered anybody killed, uh, knock on wood, that I know of. But um, Yeah, if- I don't know of any. Uh, it was a case, I understand, that uh, his father sent him to military school when he was young because he'd gone into, into New York and bought a switchblade. I didn't hear that story. Yeah, I don't know where I read it, but... Hmm. So it's not stabbing anyone, but it's mm-hmm. you know moving along along the, those lines. Um, the, he gets irritated, and I'm quoting from the DSM again: irritated when others fail to as- assist, quote, in their very important work, unquote. Well, that's the wall. Um, and I, look, it's going to be hard, perhaps, to write the book and not have it come out as political. Mm-hmm. Easy to say, you know, the wall's a, a ploy to, to his right-wing base and so on. And that may or may not be true. A lot of us have opinions about it. But what's more interesting to me in terms of narcissism is not that he believes in the wall, but rather that he cannot negotiate about it and cannot understand the position that other people oppose him on it. Right. So this, this, Slam on the desk and walking out um, is an indicative of uh, a demand, an expectation mm-hmm. that follow his his wishes, and it, and an emotional inability to uh, empathize and see the position of others. Exactly. There's probably ways to discuss these issues and keep it out of the political series of judgments. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I'm, I'm going to endeavor to be as academic, but also give personal experiences from having been in the Moonies and yeah, quote yeah. ex-Scientologists and quote other former members of other cults to make yeah. parallels and to, and to make a case uh, for people to consider. But I also want to just I'll do a lot of focusing on the social persuasion and social influence parts of it and to which I want to call out the left and the right, uh, wherever mm-hmm. there's black and white, all or nothing, you know, good versus evil thinking and 
and yeah. objectifying the other and mm -hmm. the, yeah I, I'm looking again the conscious or unwilling exploitation of others um, mm. uh, overworking people uh, it, it looks like that's what's going on now with a with a partial shutdown with the closure mm -hmm. really hurting and people are expressing that and the country's a danger you know right. with airport but um, he, he's insensitive to those issues. Oh, go out and, uh, uh, you know, borrow some money from your father, from friends and whatnot. Oh. And Nancy Pelosi's argument is, well, Trump could borrow money. For, he was getting money in the hundreds of thousands since he was three years old. Most people can't do that stuff. So right. uh, anyway, it's going to be easy, I think, to go through a list. Uh, I and your sensitivity about about uh, the politics is going to be important. The the this issue about narcissistic supply, this uh, uh, that's one of the tough ones. And I, there's so many different arguments about why his supporters, why he has supporters, mm -hmm. in the face about all the negative evidence about him. The Numbers around what thirty eight percent thereabouts. Yeah. Um, and you know some of it. Uh, once people ha get believed in uh, believe in him, uh, it's not a social, it's not a social psychological concept, but I think it's got parallels. I believe in social psychology. And people talk about it in echo chamber. Mm. That uh, you know, if you listen to Fox News. And this and Trump, and they all say pretty much the same thing. One can have a feeling that one is well informed, and that uh, that other people of of intelligence and position believe as as you do. So some of it's informational. Uh, whether some of it is, I know that what is it a, a what's it called an authority defiant disorder in the DSM. Um, Positional defiance. That's it. That's what I'm thinking of. I believe that's usually applied to children. Yeah. Who know better than me? But there, uh, much of what seemed to be uh, Trump's appeal was people's sense that he was outside of Washington. He was going to clean the swamp. Mm -hmm. He wasn't one of. He wasn't a traditional politician. He could speak rudely and coarsely, uh, and and not be, he wasn't politically correct and so on. Right. So I don't know uh, exactly what social psychological concepts one would apply to the narcissistic supply. And I, there is a literature, um, I haven't seen much of it, but there is a literature about followers. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, sociologists talk about charisma. Mm -hmm. And the Trouble with the concept is that it doesn't doesn't talk about the substance of the person who's making the claims. I mean, you should probably know charisma is a threefold uh, construct. First, it's the person who makes uh, supernatural, dramatic claims. Second, it's uh, uh, people have to accept those claims, and then third essentially an inner circle has to gather around and reinforce those claims. Now, uh, you've probably heard of the Jerusalem syndrome. No. In, 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 oh, that's, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, this is a... a well, maybe I have, but I... I, I not oh, yeah, well, this is a good one. Uh, yeah. um, in Israel, especially with Christian evangelicals, multiple times a year, someone goes on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem and they're so overwhelmed by the presence and the power, they start to believe that, that they are the Messiah. Oh, yeah, yes, I have heard yeah. about this. Yeah. And so uh, Israeli psychiatrists are, are expected, they know how to handle it and so on. And I think it's, it seems to me it's happened in one or two other places. I, a friend of mine, a Jewish friend of mine years ago, had, had the same phenomenon happen. Uh, except she didn't think she was the Messiah, she became super Jew. <laughs> you know, came back here, and she kind of modified, but but it's a phenomenon. So right. now, in those cases, you've got a, a person making supernatural claims, dramatic supernatural claims, and nobody believes them. 
So they have one characteristic of charisma, not the others. Right. Second, uh, there's a wonderful uh, example. God, what was his name? Uh, you, you probably heard about it. Uh, this was a, a political, com a social commentator, Raj. I forget his last name. It was an Indian last name. He'd done some TV commentators and so on. Uh, commentary. He wrote a couple of books about, uh, I think, ecology and, and whatnot. And he started getting emails and phone calls. I think even people come to his house saying, are you the Messiah? And he's going, what? You know, what are you, what? And it turned out that the, the Benjamin Krem people, uh, who had always been saying for decades now, the, the Messiah is here, the Messiah is present. And you may recall some of those old pictures about the back of somebody running through a marketplace in the Middle East somewhere, and you'd see that, you'd say, that's a Messiah. Well, somehow that group, the Share International people, had identified this guy as being the Messiah. Mm. And he's saying, no. And so what he did to refute his, this claim, he put up, put up the excerpt for Mon Monty Python, The Life of Brian. And there's one exchange where there's a crowd down below, and and Jesus or my, Brian and his mother up in a uh, in a window looking down, and his finally his the the phrase that came up in the exchange and what this guy used on his website is I'm just a naughty little boy. So here was a case of a guy who didn't claim anything supernatural. People were attributing it to him, right. and he rejected. It. So he meets one of the uh, charisma characteristics that have all. Now, the third one, though, is this inner circle. And a person's only going to get traction if his or her ideas get, his or her, their ideas, to be politically correct, gets, uh, gets codified and sent out to the world. Right. So you've got to have uh, yes. you know, some people who are, I think, charismatic and have good messages, but I don't. I don't send out their messages to everybody. It's that third category that that we would call it narcissistic supply that goes on. The editing, the uh, the people who hide the foibles of the group leader from the outside public and whatnot. And so it's like Mark Burnett on The Apprentice. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, that's what. That's you know the people who worked on The Apprentice for fourteen years talked about how it was a crafted image and how difficult he was and how so they had thousands of hours that never got used because they wanted to craft a story that made him out to be Superman, you know, successful wow. billionaire. And you might remember the name of the author who finally said that he wrote The Art of the Deal. Tony Schwartz. Okay, so he's talked a lot about yeah, the ghostwriter for Trump. Yeah. He yeah, regrets yeah. having written the book because it helped him make <laughs> it. Like now. But uh, so, yeah. I, you know, I think there's a, uh, the whole emoluments controversy, this sense that, well, there's nothing wrong with, with uh, emissaries from foreign governments staying in the, hope, uh, in the Trump hotels. That's, you know, he's entitled to it. He's got a hotel. So there's just so much you can work with. Uh, I remember when Trump, uh, after he got elected, he upped the fees for Mar Largo. You know, the sense that, well, if you want to be with me, right. you to pay more uh, access. So if I can tap onto your expertise as a cult expert, because I know you do some expert witness, you've written voluminously. Um, Talk about, if, you, if you're comfortable, about the beliefs of people who are followers of some, like you've worked on the Children of God, I believe, uh, so, many, so many different groups. But it, for me, it just seems like this, and, and, and with Trump, I'm, re, I'm reading a book by Charles, uh, Stephen Strang called God and Donald Trump. And oh. Talks all about the prophecies that God wanted Donald Trump to be president and how he is like a King Cyrus figure. He is a right. Pagan. And this, this belief system where they're projecting uh, apparently d divinity 
uh, 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 energy around what's, whatever he says or does. It seems to me, I can't remember who, uh, there are two related but different prophecies involving uh, Trump in some evangelical Christian circles. Uh, and one was he was Cyrus, and the other, I can't remember, uh, I was Nebuchadnezzar, I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar is the other side, yeah. Yeah. So there, there's two different things that go on, of course, and then there's Mike Pence's role in, in, in all those things. Now, what does strike me, though, about cult leaders and, and Trump, oddly enough, involves higher education. Um, yeah, they, people don't talk about this. I mean, you know uh, better than me that that uh, Reverend that Moon. Here I almost said Reverend Moon. Yes, thank you for stopping yourself. Yes, yes, Moon uh, took on uh, uh, titles that he never earned. Right. He was a trained Reverend, and then I I've heard people call him Reverend Doctor. You know, these were. Uh, Doctorates awarded, I believe, in all instances, you'd have to check, about uh, Unification Church Mooney-related uh, uh, universities. Now, there was one where he donated $35,000 to a small, mm -hmm. and then he got an honorary doctorate. Okay, and I think, did, did, did Bridgeport give him one? I, I, again, Possible, because he, yeah, you know, he owned it, yeah. I should say. <laughs> He's dead now, but... You know better, but this... this uh, uh, obsession, if I can call it that, with uh, professional titles and achievements related to education. Now, now of course, uh, Hubbard did the same thing. Right. You know, he called himself a civil engineer, and uh, he, was, he never had a professional designation of that. He, he took a civil engineering course at George Washington. He got a B in it, but, uh, but on books, he was saying, Albert Hubbard, CE, and then PhD. Of course, the PhD was from Sequoia University, and that was paper. Uh, well, it disputed the term paper mill, but it was a uh, uh, buy your uh, buy your your degree, and then one that people omit is that he called himself at one point uh, dean emeritus of science, uh, Hubbard College. It's on it's on one book uh, mm -hmm. that I found recently. And it turns out Hubbard College was a tiny uh, splinter group off of, uh, what was the name, Don Purcell, I think in Kansas City. There was a fight over finances. Hmm. And uh, there was a rift. So Hubbard took, a, we don't know how many, it could have been five, it could have been 35, I don't know, people and split off from, from uh, Purcell's group in Kansas City and started the Hubbard College. And that was what he was claiming he was the dean of science of. Yeah. Okay. So, Trump University. Right. You know, to uh, assert and believe that he was so, so smart that he could create and offer uh, university-level uh, instruction, the people he hired, uh, based around his principles and, and practices. This obsession with, uh, I guess, university has status. Yeah. If these people are trying to establish themselves uh, with status, uh, they make these claims. So the Trump University is probably worth, I don't know a whole lot about it. It's probably worth looking at at some depth. So it, it was a multi-level marketing thing. He more or less did nothing, but he gave yes. his name, uh, and they settled suits for $25 million against people who were unhappy because they didn't get anything that they were promised yes. to do. But coming back to your expertise and just this um, phenomenon of uh, where he said, I could murder someone on Fifth Avenue and people would still... Yeah. you know, believe in me and, and vote for me, et cetera. Um, any other groups come to mind that you've studied that, that might have, you know, resonate um, with what you're seeing in the United States? Well, of course, the two obvious ones are Unification Church and, and, and Scientology. But the phenomenon of uh, 
narcissism in the context of cultic groups seems to be widespread. I mean, it's impossible really to get any kind of statistical verification of how many and right. what percentage and whatnot. But among the personality disorders, narcissism seems to be the most prevalent and the most obvious. Mm-hmm. Now, there are others. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, uh, again, as you know far better than me, narcissism shades into psychopathy in, in, in some degrees. And there's, a, there's certainly a meanness to what's, what, certain, what Trump does. And, but you're right, I don't know of any instances of him actually killing anybody directly, although one wonders about the policy now about withdrawal from, from, the, from Syria and so on. Yeah, good point. So what about conspiracy theories? I know you've written about sovereign citizens and can you talk a little bit about yeah. conspiracy theories, Alex Jones and all of that? Um, you'll have to, uh, in one of the articles, uh, th- there is a brief mention in the DSM about a uh, personality disorder that, that can manifest in, in uh, the flooding of courts with, with paper. And there's certainly delusional disorders, but there's also another one, and I can't remember which one is in there now, but it's, it's in one of the articles. If you can't find it, it's easy for me to, to locate. Okay. So one what of your articles? Uh, yeah, um, probably, yeah, I, I, think, I think I've done two. It, it's in one. It's easy, easy for me to find. Uh-oh. I just got something on my screen that I don't understand. There it goes. Um, Good. By yeah, the way, I'd love to see your paper on moon and narcissism. Okay. I think yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still working on, on the collected edit, uh, editions. But as a conference paper, it's certainly citable as a conference paper. Yeah. If I could, if you could send along whatever you can, I'll give you full, yeah. full citation. I, I, I remember the, the, the quotes you used were just marvelous that you had mm-hmm. dug up from his own master speech. Yeah. Well, there, uh, so, I mean, sovereign, there is, there's one uh, legal psychiatric study about sovereign citizens. Mm-hmm. And, but it was more, uh, in this case, it was all Af- African Americans. And some of them, did show uh, mental health disorders. Hmm. Uh, uh, I've got that reference. It's easy to to send along. Uh, But the conspiracy theories, I suspect that if one really wanted to look at conspiracy theories, you'd have to go back to the early periods of American history. I know in, even under Washington's time, it seems to me there was a, was it the Y rebellion? There was a debate over, uh, the, abil- uh, the ability of uh, the right of the government to uh, interfere with ta- taxation and so on. Mm-hmm. Certainly, if you go back to the anti-intellectualism of, of the 50s, um, with some of the, the right wing, the John Birch Society period and whatnot, right. and so on, uh, there's been an undercurrent of anti-intellectual, anti-intellectuals conspiracy that goes way back. And of course, the and the assassination and so on. Uh, now, what's the what's interesting now is the, the QAnon and how that's uh, mm-hmm. to the, the the Trump uh, anti-establishment uh, ideology that that's floating around. And um, it is peculiar for a lot of us why Trump wasn't identified as one of the the elite. Mm-hmm. I don't really have a good answer for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, his rhetoric was uh, that he wasn't, but everything else about him, his lifestyle, his arrogance, uh, whatnot, certainly indicated, indicated that he was. Right. So how he was able to separate himself is interesting. And in terms of understanding it, Probably one will have to look at the some of the Russian bots. Definitely, you know the stuff they and were, agents, actual human agents yes. that were doing psyops. Yes. So it's going to be um, 
it's going to be a hell of a book <laughs> through all this stuff. Better you than me, that's for sure. <laughs> right. But it could be a very important one. Hmm. Now, is this, are you finished your dissertation yet? Is that done? No, I'm, uh, I've got 16 credits of courses, and then I have uh, my dissertation to, uh, I, I've started my research. I'm going to do another quantitative research study, at least one more, maybe more than that. Couldn't this be the dissertation? What? This book? No, no, no. But it could be, couldn't it? It's, but it's not. <laughs> Anyway, I don't want to make uh, your life difficult. All right. I don't talk about my doctoral program, but the, <laughs> the, the, the yeah, the, this this is really just a you know real analysis from someone who is in a right wing cult, who's helped people yeah. for forty three years, and the patterns that I'm seeing and where they fit and where they don't fit. And also, you know, I have a whole book on how to help people uh, start thinking critically again and to retest their belief system. And I think that that will be a big part of, of the contribution will be to tell people who have stopped talking to friend, friends and relatives that they truly cared about and yeah. a deep relationship oh, with and they won't even talk to each other. I'm hoping to encourage people to reach out and find the humanity in each other and not it just... It could be a, a big seller in Washington, D.C. because there's so much trouble getting dates. If you're a Republican, Republican, no one will date you, so I hear. So you could do some... Uh, yeah, so, you know, it really, it's... Uh, yeah, there's so many things to talk about. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you think is important that you'd like to add? Um, I don't know if it's where to fit it in, but uh, the racism and the, the gun cultures. You know, I mean, all these groups in various ways, uh, and if you want to go far further, the homophobia that's certainly, I don't know how much Trump has said, but certainly the policies in his, the undoing of, of many of the, the uh, Obama federal policies and so on. Um, you, those homophobia shown up in a lot of these groups. Yes, people, the leaders are feel threatened by the the sense. Um, I mean, even David Berg and uh, uh, the Children of God had policies that allowed uh, uh, lesbianism, but he never, when it came to male hom uh, homosexuality, he never went there. He was. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Hubbard's early statements. Um, I don't know specifically about Moon's. I just have a sense. Oh, Moon is homophobic. And it's yeah, I kind of remember that. You would know quotes about oh, it. Oh, yeah. I have to share a quote from Alan Tate Wood, who told me, who is a leader in the Moonies for four and a half years. He asked Moon on one occasion, how do we help these homosexual brothers in the group? And Moon said, tell them if it becomes a problem to cut it off, barbecue it, put it in a shoebox, and mail it to me. Oh, my. That's a direct quote. Oh, my. Yeah. Well, an issue with these people. Other one is guns. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly it was a case. I wouldn't even, even talk about what uh, Moon's obsession with guns. And now what the manifestation of it in the... Well, they, they actively supported Trump's candidacy. Yeah. Um, and, and there was an undercurrent not quite as visible in Scientology about guns. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's that old quote about Hubbard, apparently in one of his lectures, pointing out a 45 and shooting into the floor, and the, the R245 issue against yeah, exactly. the squirrels. But, but there, the credible reports, and I even heard one privately, about a lot of guns in in, in Hammett. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a, uh, I've seen on, on uh, probably Tony Ortega's website, the drone picture of, of Eagle, Eagle's Nest above Hammett. It, was, it looked like it's a sniper, mm -hmm. a sniper uh, covering. So, the, you know, this issue about guns and... Well, it fits in with the paranoia that they're coming to get us. They're enemies of truth that are trying to keep the planet from getting, you know, healed or from getting cleared. 
So it all makes sense on that level. Yeah. Um, if I think of anything else, I can drop you a note or something. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. Yeah, and the moon, the moon uh, conference paper, I'd be very grateful if you could shoot that along. Um, I'm working, well, I've got a big book on just the theoretical issues about, about some men, mental health and, and cult leaders, and then it's collection of readings. Okay. But I've got some more time this semester, so I'm hoping I can get, all I need to, it just to finish the, the introduction and then, uh, you know, select the readings, which I pretty much have done already. So great. I keep saying it's, but. Add Lyndon LaRouche. I'm planning to cover LaRouche as well. Uh, the, who ran from. I haven't heard. Uh, uh, what's his name? The, the big author. Was Dennis it? King. Yes. Yeah, he's still kicking around. I haven't talked to Dennis in a while, but I have a, a, a zoom uh, chat set up with Dennis Torish. Uh, who wrote oh, a book on political yes. cults. Um, yeah, but thank you so much and uh, continued good work and success. And I look forward to seeing you again. Okay, we'll keep in touch and I'll talk to you again. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Bye. So long. <laughs>